welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Frank Mac Lee, and today we're going to finish up a project we started a little earlier. Uh, well, we took this old piece of crusty, rusty axle here, two inch by two inch, what it originally started as, and made us a couple of good looking blocks, uh, inch and a half by 1.9. By the time I removed the uh, rust off, I was at 1.9 on there. We're going to make us a couple of these blocks for boring bars. All right, as I've shown before in uh, some of my other videos, we've got to take some measurements on these, uh, uh, on the dovetail to replicate over on our new blocks. Now, I know this one fits uh, good on my, uh, on my quick change tool post. So I'm using it as the, uh, as a standard that I'm going to uh, measure by and cut the other two. I'm using two pins here out of my gauge pin set. They can be drills, they can be end mills, uh, drill rod, whatever you've got. You just, and they don't even have to be the same size. They just need, you need to use the same ones to get your initial measurements that you use to get your final measurements on the piece you're cutting. I happen to have a 251 and a 252 here, and I'm going to place that in between. I'm going to use an adjustable parallel to get a good measurement there. Just snug that in between, and then use the micrometer to, uh, to measure it with. And that is one inch and ten thousandths. 1.010. So I'm going to make a note of that. Now I want to get this measurement across the points up here. So again, I'm going to use a just a different set of or a different adjustable parallel. That is 1.3, but that's uh, that's like four thousandths being at 1.375. So that'd be. Uh, 1.371 across those flats. Now I want to get my depth micrometer and measure this depth right here. And of course I'm sure you're familiar but any dovetail right at this edge right here is the height you want to measure to. In the center there's a little bit of relief in there but I'm going to measure on this high spot right here. 387.387. All right, so I think we've got all the dimensions we need now to move over to the uh, mill and start milling the pieces out. I've got both pieces in the mill vise at one time now, got them ganged in there. And what I'm going to do, instead of taking this tool out and putting my edge finder and so forth in there, for what we're doing here, if I just find that edge with the tool itself, uh, find each edge, get the center. That'll be plenty close enough to put the uh, dovetails in with. All right, so I'll zero out my X there. Once it grabs that paper, I'm just gonna let it go. Do the same thing on each side. All right, so now I'll go X, one half. And right there is our starting position. Again, I've done dovetails before, but what I'm gonna do is cut with this 5 8 end mill, I'm gonna cut to full depth, one pass through here. Then I'm gonna step to this side, conventional milling, take 30, 40 thousandths off at a time, step over to the other side, do the same thing, walking side to side, uh, working from the center out until we have our desired dimensions. All right, so I've got two pretty heavily scribed lines right here that should be right on the inside of where our mark is. When I get close to those, I'll take another measurement, but right now, what we want to do is get our depth set
I zero out the DRO right there. And again, we want to take this down. I remeasured that instead of uh, 0.387, we're going to go down a total of 0.385. But what I'm going to do is when I get about 375 on my uh, Z axis DRO on here, I'll start taking some measurements in. All right, let's give it a go. All right, I'm going to continue this process until I get this center section down to the desired depth, and then I'll bring it back. All right, we got our Z-axis to depth on here now, and as I've said before, all I'm going to do is step over. Uh, we'll start here. Let's see. We'll try about about 30, 35 thousandths at the time on each side of where we're at here. And when I start getting close to my uh, uh, scribe lines I put on there, I'll stop and take exact measurements to see where to go to. All right, I'm going to continue that. I need to get my chip guard set back up again. Those are some hot needle chips throwing at me. But I'll bring you back when we get close to the scribe lines. All right, according to the calculations, I should, I should have had to move about 373 thousandths each side of uh, zero. I've moved 350 thousandths, and I've got just about to my scribe line. Remember, I made the scribe line a little on the inside of... Uh, the measured target. So we'll put the uh, parallel in there, expanding parallel, and see where we are now. And we're at one point, one point three. Eighteen now. That's fifty-two thousandths. Let me double check my math. One point three seven zero oh is what we're looking for. Minus one point three one eight that we've got. It's fifty-two thousandths divided by two. That's twenty-six more thousandths on each side. And we moved 350, so 376 is where we want to, to set our DRO, 376. Now we'll go 376 on the other side of zero. That's uh, it's got the main slot come out. We'll come back after we get the uh, 60 degree cut out of there and put a little relief in the center. Uh, but I want to leave that flat for now to measure the dovetail with the pins on. So I'm going to get set up for the to, with the dovetail cutter, and we'll be back in a moment. You know, every time I cut a dovetail with this old worn out broken 
uh, dovetail cutter. I convinced myself that I'm not going to be cutting another one for a long time, so there's no need of investing in a good dovetail cutter. And then I wind up, you know, three, four weeks later using it again. One of these days I'm going to spring for a good dovetail cutter from Randy Richards. But right now we're going to see if we can work this one out just like we cut the main groove. I'm going to come in here and I've got, got the uh, zero set on the z-axis and I'm going to gradually take a little bit off of this side, move to that side, take in a little bit and when we get a, a reasonable dovetail cut in there then I'll get the uh, gauge pins out and we'll uh, take a measurement. All right, that was at 340 thousandths on that side of zero. So we'll come over here and do the same thing on this side. Now it's got us a good starting point. So I'll bring you back when we get closer to having the, uh, or when we get ready to uh, actually do a measurement. Okay, just looking at it, I can tell we're getting very close uh, to, to where we should be. So I'm going to drop my pins in there. I've got it cleaned up good. I brushed it off, then I took my little three-point file and just made certain there were no burrs up under there. Uh, nothing that would prevent the uh, pins from setting in there like we want them to. Remember, I'm using the same pins that I use to measure the master one, or what we're going to call the master one. This should be a little less than an inch now. So I've got my other micrometer, my inch micrometer out. Point nine eight three. All right, we wanted one point oh one oh, and this is point nine eight three. And let's see, one point oh one oh minus point nine eight three is twenty seven thousandths. Divide that by two. That's uh, 13 and a half thousandths, 14 thousandths off of each side. And so far we've moved 460 thousandths off on each side. So that's 474 is where I want to set my DRO to make this final pass. Okay, before I actually take any of this out, I'm going to take the quick change tool post. I'm going to get it off the lathe, bring it over here and double and check it before I take it out. But even if I do take the work out and I need to put it back in, I've got my lathe stop, or I'm sorry, my, my vice stop mounted back here uh, to bump those up to. And I'll leave DRO and everything set just like it is. I'll bring right back. All right, it's just a little tight going in there now, but before I try to cut it any deeper in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of relief in this center, and I'm, I'm just gonna come down six thousandths there and just do it with the dovetail cutter, cutting out of the center here.
Okay, I've got a little little relief cut in the bottom down there and again got it deburred all the way around. So let's try to quick change post in there. Locks down good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to take them out and double check one more time with it mounted where I can get a good grip on it with it mounted on the lathe. Then we'll come back and drill our holes in. All right, let's give them one quick check over here before we go any further. Feels like there might be a little burr down in that one somewhere. Tighten it down good. All right, I think just a little cleaning up and they'll be fine. So we'll get set up now to drill our hole through that the boring bar will actually go in. Mr. Bozo, I'm not sure how many of you were hollering at your screen, shouting at it, telling me to wake up, look at what I was doing. But in my own defense, I did all the preliminary work on these blocks, getting them sized up on a Thursday and Friday uh, of the previous week. Come back in here three days later on Monday to cut the dovetails. Not sure how many of you saw what I did. Dovetails fit fine. I was trying to replicate this block. I cut the dovetails on the wrong edge. So, what I can do, see two cho three choices here. One, I can throw these in the scrap bin, which I'm not going to do. Two, I can cut these down, mill some more off this edge, off the long edge, and make standard uh, 200, 250 series. Uh, AXA uh, tool holders. But what I was looking for was the bulk, the weight, and the bulk of this, of the heavier ones for the boring bars. And I can still get that with this piece. But instead of being down like this, this will be up there. So the I'll just have to be careful where I drill the hole so that I don't max out the height and depth uh, of the tool holder on the quick change tool post. If I put it at the same height this one is over here, I should be all right. I should still have the bulk here. This may stick up a little bit above the tool post, but I think they'll still be usable if my OCD will allow me to do that. So. I'm going to think on that a little bit, and either you'll never see this video, or I'll be over at the mill drilling, drilling some holes in a second. All right, I'm going to use them. I've got the bulk, or I've got the weight, which is what I was after. I've got that in this, uh, but I'm not going to trust my memory a bit to go over there to the... Uh, mill and start drilling it until I've got it laid out correctly. All right, this block was an inch and a half when setting in this direction. And this hole is in the center on both axes on this block. So the center of that is three quarters. So I'm going to get the height gauge set. And just as a sanity check, now in this direction with the dovetail up, 
Remember this was two inches. So half of that is one inch. Again, I'll set this up. And let's see, I want to be sure. I want to get it one inch. from the dovetail side. Don't, I'll be drilling into the dovetail. So with the dovetail down on both of them, same height there, dovetail facing, same height here. I'm going to get a little center punch on these. Then I'm going to go, finally go over to the mill and drill them out. I'm going to use a wiggler to locate the, uh, the center punch that I put over there on the workbench on both of the pieces. That will be plenty close enough for drilling the hole all the way through. Lock the table down and zero out the DRO. All right, I'm going to drill this. Well, I'll drill both of them all the way through with a quarter inch. But I'm going to drill this one to begin with. And this will be the one to use the 3 8 boring bar in. So I'll actually drill it with a 3 8. There's absolutely no need of trying to have a perfect fit there for, I mean, for a perfect slip fit by reaming it out. Needs to be able to go in there and have the set screws and tighten down on it. So I'm just going to drill this through. I need a little cutting oil, so I'll bring you back when we get that drilled. Another thing I'll mention too, these blocks are three inches. My quill travel on my lathe is three inches. So I'm going to First off, I'm going to bring it down right along there. Now, when I, to go all the way through, I'll likely have to bring the quill down just a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it enough room to clear chips out as long as possible. Alright, I'm actually going to have to extend the drill out just a little bit. I don't quite have three inches of drill sticking out. Alright, that was all my quill travel there. So I'll bring the head down just a little bit. That's all it took to go through. All right, I'll bring, bring you back when we get this one drilled. All right, this is the first one done now. And this was the 3 8 boring bar right here. That goes in there fine. Next thing, of course, on them will be drilling the holes in the top to secure them with. And, of course, by putting the dovetail on the wrong side, that means I've got to have some longer uh, set screws in here than I was planning on. But I'm going to get the other one drilled now, and then we'll get set up to drill and tap our, our lockdown screws. All right, using the uh, layout on one of the existing uh, tool holders, I laid out holes on both of these. I've got one of them drilled already, drilled and tapped. But uh, I'm not necessarily going to share the dimensions on that just simply because yours are going to vary as far as where you put them on this plane. Now the space in here from center is 0.7 to the first one 
and 1.2 from center. 0.7, 1.2, 0.7, 1 1.2. It's what I'm using. That closely matches the, uh, the existing tool holders. What I'll be using in those, uh, I realize everything on the ones you buy from Shores or whoever or metric, <clears throat> but I've got a big supply of these, 5 16 24, uh, James Kilroy's favorite dimension. But I've got a good supply of these, one inch long, and one inch will, let's see, let me get that where you can see what I'm talking about. One inch real, will move down to it. It's going to put the, the socket just a little bit below the top, but that'll be perfectly fine. If I'd done it like I was supposed to, it would have been even better. But in any case, I'm going to drill and tap these holes. Once I get those drilled and tapped uh, with the starter tap, taper tap, I have to go over to the vise and use the bottom and tap and bottom each one out. These four on the back row back here, of course, will drill through to the hole we put for the boring bar. This one will be will drill about a three quarters of an inch deep, just enough to get plenty of threads to hold the height adjustment. All right, now I'm going to carry these over to the Wilton vise. I won't bother to carry the camera over there, but what I'm going to do is, is go over there with the uh, bottom tap and bottom each one of these out all the way through.
right, I think I'm about ready to wrap this project up, or at least wrap the video portion of it up. Give you an idea of what I was doing over there on the sander. This is one straight from the mill, and we know how end mills leave, leave their tracks behind. This is not at all equal to a surface grinder, and it may not be perfectly flat, but it looks a whole lot better than the uh, than the tracks left by an end mill. Of course, I wasn't able to get down in here. There's a few little places. Uh, the lining in that side of the shop is not near as good as it is over here. So I'll go back and hit this one a little bit more uh, while I'm doing this one as well. But of course, the way these will work, this is the one for the 3 8 These boring bars have a flat surface on them. Go in there to the desired depth and lock it down. Got the four locking screws. This is the uh, 12 millimeter one, approximately a half inch. Same thing with it. One more little thing. This is completely non-scientific, but it's the <clears throat> best thing I could do for a set of scales in here. Heavy enough or don't have a set of scales substantial enough to weigh this. <clears throat> Excuse me again. This is the original Born Bar holder. This is the one we made, and they're both loaded down with all their set screws and so forth. And that is just about on a balance there. But the point I wanted to make with that, this is two of the standard size ones. Get that pivot point right on center. And as you can see, I'm just holding it over there so that that center way to rule. The one we just, ones we just made are more than twice the bulk or the volume, the weight of one of these ordinary holders. Now it's not quite three times if I set the third one over there and I'm just holding my finger over here just to keep it from rolling off the edge. So it's about two and a quarter, maybe two and a half times as heavy as one of these. And with boring, I think that will help uh, stabilize it. I know the boring bar in this always work better than the boring bar just clamped in one of these. So hopefully you got a little bit out of this video, even with all my bozo moments in there. So take care. We'll see you on the next one.